So we've been talking about presidents and black civil rights, right? And I thought it would be fun to see where the founding fathers stood on black civil rights. And let's start with the very first president of the United States of America, George Washington. Now, when we talk about founding fathers and black people, we're really talking about enslaver and enslaved, right? Because that's what was going on in that time period. And Mr. George Washington owned enslaved people, most of them coming from his wife, Martha Washington. But don't be confused. He owned enslaved people in his own right. He'd owned them since he was 11 years old. Keeping in mind that Washington came up in a time when large-scale tobacco planting carried out by enslaved labor dominated the economy and society of colonial Virginia. Like everyone else, Washington made full use of enslaved labor, buying and selling enslaved people, and even raffling off a debtor's enslaved laborers, including children, to recoup a loan. You heard me correctly. The first president of the United States of America raffled off a debtor's enslaved people to recoup a loan. Now, based on my research, apparently, Washington fed, clothed, and housed his enslaved laborers poorly, candidly admitting that some of the dwellings he provided were so miserable that a white person would never consent to live in them. Washington institutionalized an indifference to the stability of enslaved families. He separated husbands and wives, housing enslaved male artisans close to the mansion where their skills were needed, while keeping their wives and children on his outlying farms miles away. Now, remember when I said that enslaved women worked right alongside their uh, husbands and they were expected to produce the same as their men. Historian Lorena S. Walsh found that about 61% of Washington's field slaves were women doing hard labor, such as collecting and spreading manure, cleaning stumps, making fences, uh, cleaning stables, and breaking ground with hand tools. The enslaved people were expected to work from sunrise to sunset over a six-day work week that was standard on Virginia plantations. With two hours off for meals, their work days would range between seven and a half hours to 13 hours, depending on the season. They were given three or four days off at Christmas and a day each at Easter. Domestic slaves started early, worked into the evenings, and did not necessarily have Sundays and holidays free. Enslaved people who were less able through injury, disability, or age were given light duties, while those who were too sick to work were generally, though not always, excused uh, from work while they recovered. He approved harsh punishment, even for the seemingly trivial offenses of being impertinent. In 1793, Washington retroactively approved a very good whipping to a seamstress who apparently annoyed the plantation manager with her independent mind. When the manager reported he was determined to lower her spirit or skin her back, Washington replied, if she or any other of the servants will not do their duty by fair means or are impertinent, correction as the only alternative must be administered. Enslaved people were issued um, a basic set of clothing each year, okay? Uh, they slept and worked in their clothes, leaving them to spend many months in garments that were worn, ripped, and tattered. 
Washington provided enslaved people with a blanket each fall at most, and they used this blanket for their own bedding. And he ordered the enslaved people to use their blankets to gather leaves for livestock beds. He says, let people with their blankets go every evening to the nearest wood and fill them with leaves. <sighs> this had to be done, he said, for the comfort of the creatures. Fuck the people, huh? Yeah, okay. 1798. A visitor to Mount Vernon wrote, They are more miserable than the most miserable of cottages of our peasants. The husband and wife sleep on a mean pallet, the children on the ground. A very bad fireplace, some utensils for cooking, but in the middle of this poverty, some cups and a teapot. A boy of 15 was lying on the ground, sick and in terrible convulsions. The general had sent to Alexandria to fetch a doctor. A very small garden planted with vegetables was close by, with five or six hens, each one leading 10 to 15 chickens. It was the only comfort that is permitted them. After the Revolutionary War, Washington began to express regret for owning enslaved people, and he expressed a desire to see gradual emancipation. Gradual emancipation because it would be too shocking to free all the coloreds at the same time. Yeah, Virginia in particular made it hard to emancipate black people. And if you emancipated them, you had to put them out of Virginia. No freed blacks in Virginia. That's a different conversation. By the 1780s, he said that being an enslaver was his only regret, but he made no official public statements on slavery or emancipation. And apparently he showed no regret for pulling teeth from enslaved people to make his dentures. Are we supposed to forget about that? I guess those enslaved people didn't need their teeth. Okay, let me stop. Okay, let's move on. Okay, here we go. Historian Charles, uh, who is it? Charles Repley. Um, he found evidence that in 17, uh, I believe it was 1790, Washington, acting secretly through a back channel, helped introduce Quaker petitions to Congress advocating a national emancipation effort and a ban on the international slave trade. However, James Madison found out and was like, absolutely not, and torpedoed the plan. Madison was all about the Constitution, says, ooh, we must protect slavery. That was Madison. Regardless, even though Washington was working with the Quakers to bring about emancipation, he still turned around and signed the 1793 Fugitive Slave Act. Yeah, yeah. He could have vetoed it. He had options. He did. But he signed the 1793 Fugitive Slave Act, which allowed enslavers to seize and arrest fugitive enslaved people and present written or oral proof to an official in order to reclaim their property and remove the fugitive enslaved person from whatever state they were found in. And Washington signed it. But they keep saying that Washington regretted being an enslaver. He was not able to free his enslaved people until his death and he was only able to free I think he was only able to free just over a hundred of the enslaved people because a lot of those enslaved people were not his they belonged to his stepson and his stepson was like I'm freeing no one so he freed who he could in his will and I believe he was the only one who did <laughs> 